This Waffle W live stream is brought to you by Optus, proud naming rights partner of the Waffle and the Waffle W. The rear wheel drive V6 twin turbo Kia Stinger. Simply Energy, proudly supporting WA footy. And the West Coast Eagles, supporting WA female footballers to follow their dreams. Grand final day for the Waffle W and the morning starts with the Rogers Cup Grand Final, the Youth Girls Grand Final here at Arena Joondalup and it's a uh, cool and cloudy morning, a little bit of rain earlier this morning, no rain at the moment which is good to see but rain expected throughout the day. And it's a big day for the Peel Thunder Football Club, they're in the League Grand Final later this afternoon but first things first for them, they take on South Fremantle here in the Simply Energy Rogers Cup Grand Final for 2020. There's the Bulldogs way to the southern end going through their warm-up they made their way directly through to the grand final with a win over Peel in the second semi-final meanwhile the Thunder had to do it the hard way winning the preliminary final last week on what was a big day for the Thunder Footy Club last week with their Colts their, their Rogers Cup and also their league teams winning preliminary finals to book spots in today's grand final so much to play for here for these young ladies out there and a lot of talent out there on the footy field as well We'll introduce the rest of our commentary team after this break. It's the grand final of the Rogers Cup for 2020, the Bulldogs and the Thunder. All the great teams have many things in common. That ability to deliver when it counts. That certain style about the way they do things. That ongoing quest to be the best. Goes back to back. And at Kia, that team mantra is everything. We're proud to support the WAFL and proud to offer Australia's best seven-year warranty. Because with Kia, we've got your back. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. together. Introducing Optus Family Plan with four SIMs and 250 gigs of data to share. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. Grand final of the Waffle W Rogers Cup. Teams are lined up, ready for the national anthem. The Thunder and the Bulldogs, the two teams to go at it in today's decider for the Rogers Cup. Let's go downstairs for the national anthem.
Always a special moment at any level of footy. The national anthem on grand final day and the two teams lining up. The captains are going to come across to perform the toss of the coin before the start of this game. And great to see the Peel girls have got into the spirit of grand final day as well with some coloured zinc on their cheeks as well. They're going to enjoy themselves out there, win or lose, whatever the result might be. And it should be a cracking game. These two teams have so much talent through their lineups, And there's a bit of talent in our commentary box as well. Clint Degabrot, <laughs> the uh, manager of female talent from the WA Footy Commission. Welcome. Yeah, great to be here on the grand final day. It's, uh, it's all right. The, 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 the Peel girls have decked themselves out. Uh, lovely. A couple of years ago, uh, when this competition first uh, came about, they were in ribbons in grand final day. They've no strangers to grand finals either. And Joe Taylor, who also knows a bit about grand finals, is with us as well. Great to have you back again, Joe. Yeah, it's a new perspective this year, but it's a nice, nice spot up here, so it's going to be a cracking game, I think, to start the day. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. There's, uh, there's so many good young footballers out there. A number of these players have tasted a little bit of uh, league football as well throughout the season for the two clubs, which is good experience for them. And now grand final day awaits in the Rogers Cup. What are we expecting, Dex? That's Trevor Scorer uh, on the, on the loudspeaker. <laughs> he's giving a good crack. And he's he? going to commentate uh, the game from the, the box. Be, if, if, I didn't hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> what are you expecting out there today? These two Tough. sides, there's, there's a lot of players to look out for. Yeah, terrific game. Um, um, some of it's going to be about coaching uh, today in terms of uh, both um, coaching groups keeping their head and keeping calm. So the girls will be up and about. Should be a quick game if we can keep this rain away. That's some really good players. There's probably 20 league players out there on the ground today that will play league next year. So it should be a highly skilled game. Look for some outside run from Peel. Look for some inside ball winning from South Romano. I think we've got a big chance at, uh, in terms of Rogers Cup kicking quite a few snaggers. Let's hope so. Joe, we saw the league game last week that Peel won, and that was a thrilling game of footy and uh, probably one of the best standard games we've seen in the Waffle W. We're, we're very hopeful that this bright sunshine we've got at the moment might last for the whole day, but at least for the Rogers Cup. So a nice, fast, highly skilled game is what we're after. Yeah, I think so. Both of these teams are, are very experienced in terms of Rogers Cup. So uh, the girls out there certainly know what they're doing. And, um, and I think that it'll be a highly skilled game. And fingers crossed the, um, the heavens smile on us and it's just, sunshine just all day. Just about had the whole, the whole uh, South Fremantle bench written out of the game. Uh, sorry, Peel written out of the game. South Fremantle actually didn't come off through the interchange <laughs> in the grand final before the bounce so technically none of those players are now allowed to play you can see luke sanders down there just talking to his uh, lapel mic as well i hope he's not saying all right let's rule those five out it's going to make it tough for south with no rotations today but anyway girls are excited it's great some good matchups around the ground too you see, see some run from emily guns and we can see rosie anderson there uh she's come uh, up to play here from narrage and footy she's had a big impact uh 17 year old uh, one of these players that's, that's likely to play league footy next year so this, this centre square is, is, is full of talent and it should be an entertaining game. Ready to go in the Rogers Cup Grand Final as the uh, Rucks go at it. And South Fremantle have plenty of talent around this footy in the middle. One to watch on that outer wing is Taylor Cruttenden. She has the helmet on, so she's quite distinctive. You'll also notice her because she'll flash through your screen. She's super quick. And uh, if she gets her hands on the footy, could do a bit of damage as well. Peel going forward first. Opportunity for them up at half forward. Quick kick forward goes by Thompson, only getting to the 50. They're going to try to rush this further forward, but South are in the way. Del Borello clearing out of defence down the middle of the ground. Up to the middle it comes, spinning out of a tackle. It was Reedy, kick smothered though. Nice bit of work here from Peel. They get it up towards half forward once more. Here comes Cruttenden flashing through again. Good clean hands, picking up the loose footy. Hand pass goes astray, Beth Pascoe comes through. Hand pass backwards towards Hayes, couldn't take it. Reedy's there again. Looks a likely type already in the first minute or two of the game. Up towards half forward now for South for the first time today. But Peel able to hold it up. Well tackled there was Corley. And we'll see a ball up here. Half forward for the Bulldogs attacking the left of your screen. That's a good fast start there by both teams. Um, just settling into the game. And, and hopefully they can, uh, can start to get the ball forward with a bit of fluency and, and get some score on the board. Some, uh, that's the eagle running onto the footy here. Some good work from an Arnaldi in, in the pack from Peel initially to clear that football, diving on it. Now Baxter standing up nice and straight and tall. Some kind of kick fashion forward at the moment. Coming the other way, nicely done. Emma Innes played a lot of footy at the Peel Footy Club. Some injury issues too through the State Academy and she holds onto the ball. Just a little too long for the umpire's liking. And the tackle resultant free kick is in Taylor Cruttenden's hand. Solid kick of the footy she's developed over the last cup of, well, over, over this season, really. She's improved her kick out of sight. It's uh, inside 50 now. South Fremantle. Tied up. One another ball up. Shakira Pickett. 
lurking around this stoppage range. Pulls out again. It's Pasco once more. Controlled her wing. Running onto that's Nell Baxter. Seen this a little bit from Nell. Last year of Rogers Cup. Long kick's okay. Goes over to over the back of the pack. Going inside 50 for the second time's peel. No possessions as yet. Now things seem to open up. Well, the pressure still from south is good. Long handball over. It's in the hands of... Is that Indy Strom? The ball goes in there. Or is it Jordan Thompson? Hard to see from here. And the first score of the match is to Peel. That's a really good start by Peel. I think Souths have, have got the chockies both times when they've met this year. So Peel will be wanting to start really strong here and, um, and put the pressure on from the beginning of the game. Kick back into play, marked by Brooker. South happy to move it out of defence wide. Delbarello unable to take the mark, but gets back onto it. Smother comes from Pasco. Forward pressure good from Peel to at least keep the ball locked in their attacking half for now. Flashing through comes Anderson. Great athletic build and the kick is effective as well. Mark is paid. He's taken there for the dogs. They'll move it on into the middle of the ground. Standing up and being paid, chopping the arms free kick. Free kick goes away to Beth Schilling. Normally sets herself up pretty well behind the ball. And she was in a good position there. Del Barello attacking that one was taken high. She's made a good start, Joe. She certainly has. Um, just across half back there, she's really stood up to date. There's a fairly, fairly few famous names out there on the ground today with some Yugles and some Garlets and, and the like. So it's pretty exciting to see what these girls can do. Beautifully directed kick that found Cronin from Del Barello, but it's Beth Schilling behind the ball again. Gets her hands away just. Got her back turned to the umpire as Rudy flashes in. She's got to have a long shot. She's a decent kick of the ball. It's carried to the square. It's carried over the top and it's gone through for a goal. Ash Reedy, Hunter Cronin, Del Barello and Ash Reedy finished off some terrific work. Some forward pressure was very neat from South from Mandolin. Ash Reedy, who wasn't playing in, in round three this year, has got the first goal in the grand final. That's a, it's a great finish there by Ash. She got a fairly nice um, Shane Warm bounce there at the end, but she's been a roundabout for the first two or three minutes of the game. She's been involved, so it's a really good uh, confidence boost for her and, and really good start to the game there for South Rio. Just got the pat on the back from Luke Sanders as he walked past, so I think he's given the all-clear for the South Fremantle rotations down there. <laughs> <laughs> he did have the, uh, the little lapel mic going. He's just gone into the Peel coaches box as well to have a word with them. So is We're it only joking, of course. I'm is sure it, is it okay fine. Sounds, <laughs> It's about a man exiting this stoppage while we're chatting to Luke Sanders. The mark is intercepted at half-back for South Fremantle. Neatly done. Just controlling the ball at the moment, Souths, and their connection by foot's pretty good. It's another, another neat catch on the far side of Souths. Can't quite see that player. I'm looking into the sun, Reg, <laughs> and I've got the binoculars facing the wrong way around. Good intercept mark. You can tell from the way she peeled back from that. That's Nell Baxter. The Baxter's kick's a good one. It's going to be intercepted again, it looks like, although two South Fremantle's getting in each other's way. It does open the door for Peel just for the moment, although it's Darcy Clements comes through, finally gets the ball onto the, onto the foot and finds from Crutton in the, in the middle of the ground. Nice little hand pass to Del Barello. Good combination off half-back, and the delivery is good. Pickett takes a good mark, coming past Crutton and comes through again. Look at this pace she's got. Gets the toe to the footy towards full forward and diving in, a good saving mark taken in defence by Peel. And it's Johansson. She'll want to go towards the outer side. Ball lands in open space. Coming across to collect first is Schilling. She's under pressure. Close to the boundary, we'll see a boundary thrown. It is a problem, Joe and Diggs. These grounds are designed for afternoon footy, aren't they? So we are looking towards the <laughs> eastern side and the sun's going to be an issue early, early stages. I didn't realise that my sunglasses were so dirty <laughs> and that my binoculars, <laughs> binoculars were so bad. What do you like so far, Joe? Um, I really like the work from Cruttenden there. We all know that she's a fantastic runner, so for her to um, to follow that up and, and get the, the handball, and she'll start to connect with those kicks, and it's going to be a real problem if Peel can't get a, get a handle on her and her pace out there on the wing. There's plenty of open space on these wings at Joondalup as well, so opportunity for her to have a real impact. Nell Baxter had it for a moment, lost it. Like the start of Anderson as well. Quite an elusive football, and oh. so too Reedy. Puts a step on one, puts a step on a second. She's already got one goal. This kick's gone a little wide, won't score. One-on-one -on -one contest in the pocket. Might have been a little shove in the back, no. Safety of the boundary line. And no free kick against McKay Tuckerman there. So good defensive work. Reedy's really causing some problems for them there across half forward. So uh, Peel might want to have a little bit of a look at that matchup as well. See, sees the game very clearly. And it all slows down for her when she gets the ball. 
ball is thrown in nicely. Aggressive throw in. Favours South from Antelope. Looks like Cronin over the back. She just handballs forward. Okay, Tuckerman chops that off. Ball still in South from Antelope's hands. Tracking the ball or trying to pick it up. Working hard. The good tackle comes from Schilling. And that is holding the ball. Best Schilling from Carey Park. Another player that's coming up to join State League football. It's a neat kick, although... Darcy Clements does a pretty good job there of getting the ball forward. Roving the ball on the ground was Sir Hoy. Coming through is Baxter. Has it? She started well. One bounce. Plenty of bright sunshine at Joonalup Oval at the moment. That's for sure. Turning her around there was uh, Hambrecht. Gets it towards halfback. Trying to get the run of it now. Rover runs it, Peel. Really allows, allows the South Randall defenders to go into their work in the midfield. Tackled without the foot there, unfortunately. And now we've just got a big wrestle. Umpire's just letting these, trying to let this work itself out. He's not able to do so. And then a couple of neat, neat, uh, pa pa uh, Nell Baxter is um, having a birthday. Yeah, she's uh, got crea get, creating that um, run off of half back there and, and really giving Peel some good opportunities up forward. So um, be good to see her continue that as the day goes on. Till Borello earns herself another free kick. Turns onto that trusty left foot and then uses it beautifully to Cronin. Started in the centre square. She's been happy to push forward as well. Coming across to make the intercept there was Barton. Didn't get her hands on the football. Again, it's Reedy involved. Coming the opposite way. Good defensive work again from Schilling. Such a natural defender. Seems to find the best positions behind the footy all the time. As this ball beats a couple of players. Anyone touch it? No. We're going to get the lasso move from our boundary umpire. So free kick paid right in front of the South Fremantle bench. And they'll get a chance to rebound again up and down this wing. High kick, Cronin in the pack again. Oh. Pasco leaps against her as well. Good contest. Cruttenden wanted the safety of the boundary. She'll get better than that. She gets a free kick for pushing the back. And there's two or three players for either side that are really standing out. In fact, it's going to go to Cronin instead. Not sure what Cronin will get the free kick for, but South more than happy to take it. So she comes in on side on the 45 degree. Nice pick up and turn there from the Bulldogs, and they're away. That bit of footy is effective from South Fremantle towards centre-half forward. Nice little step. Darcy Clements did well. It's a two-on-one up forward. Good position to be in. Ball gets over the back. Poppy Stockwell's lurking here. So too Reedy. Tried to knock it towards Stockwell. Goes back and wins it herself. Schilling has her wrapped up and then wins her own footy. Tries to emerge. Gets caught in the tackle. Suhoi takes it away for Peel. Can't really get an effective possession away. That ball might have been dropped in the tackle. No free kick. This one's just being held under the left wing. And the umpire says we'll ball it up. Interesting call. I think, that, enough forward. I think that player <laughs> might have been waiting for the holding the ball <laughs> call from the one before. One thing, but all the players agreed. They, both teams wanted the free kick. On the ball, surging forward, South from Andal. Impressed, well, in that instance, the surge mentality there was very good, but impressed with their connection by foot. Peel battling hard now to get some ground back off. Anderson tries to pick up the ball. She's held without it. She'll get the free kick. Bit of extra pressure now for Peel. Game's being played in South Fremantle's half. Anderson, with plenty of danger ahead, although this is going to be turned over. Although, yeah, Hanson drops this one. It's the kind of play she likes. She likes to run and kick long. She does so. Behind the ball again, South Fremantle. And it's a it's a great relieving mark behind the ball. Is that Eugle out there? They've been set up really well for all of Peel's uh, pushes forward. Can't the settle. South Fremantle halfbacks have, have really been able Denham. to repel that. Denham intercepting mark there. She might have a couple of touches on that far side. It's Cruttenham flashes in. Beth Schilling stands in the way. She tries to handball the ball forward again. The break-up play now. She does go long, but once again set up beautifully behind the ball and a flying mark by Tara Gala, who plays on immediately and gets this one to 30. Good area for South Mountain. The ball's over the back. It's Stockwell lurking behind her. Is that Tate Lansky? It's Lansky. She pulls the ball around the corner. Doesn't quite get it done, and Thompson's able to relieve at least for now. The kick is a good one. Falls to Mann. And she's got Nell further ahead. Man can't quite get it to Nell. Usually a good kick, man. Oh, no, Nell does really well. Takes this ball away at half back. And this is going to be promising. Ahead of the ball, there's a one-on-one -on -one and plenty of space. Paddling the ball along there is Hambrecht. Trying to get it through. P punching the ball forward now. It's Bilson. Karatha product. Even numbers now from South Mountain. Done really well to get back. They should be able to bottle this up just for a moment. And the length of the game has gone out too with no one forward of the ball here for Peel. Umpire's no choice but to 
to restart inside forward 50. That play just showed us uh, when Peel can get it on their terms and, and move the ball quickly that they're going to be quite dangerous. Uh, Souths were, were three on none down in their, in, their, in their forward line, so probably should have scored, but really good rebound there from Peel. Unlucky to not be able to capitalise with some score. Composure there from Cronin coming out of defence. Clever little sidestep and took her time with a kick. It's going to come again here for South Fremantle. Whitelaw gets it on the boot and then out wide. Controlling this defensive end is Beth Schilling. She wins this football again, sends it down the line, but the breeze catches hold of that one and drags it away. It'll be a free kick. The grand final of the Rogers Cup for 2020. 12 and a half played already in the first quarter. White, Whitelaw's doing some good work on that far side. I've, I've called Clements a couple of times, but it is, it is Whitelaw out there doing a Clements impression. Schilling again, getting involved there. Couldn't quite pull in the mark, but wins the footy again. Pickett, head down over the footy. Might have copped some high contact. She plays on anyway. Gets it forward. So Hoy gets back there for Peel. She's caught. The Thunder looking just to soccer it forward. Gunton over the football. Cruttenden's working hard in there again. No one able to find a clear possession, so the umpire will have to ball this one up. Had a goal one way, we've had a behind the other way, but it's been a pretty entertaining start. Coast to coast footy at the moment. Set Peel just looking to build, sitting back behind the ball again. Just trying to soccer the ball there a little bit. It's Yugo just giving away a free kick. Well, South's pouring into defence here. Good discipline. Kick slews off the side of the boot and Crutton takes a neat mark overhead. So Peel are going to have to set up all over again. Anderson's broken to the far side for South. The kick goes longer than that. Off the arms or off the chest and just locking up an arm in there. Just sees McKay Tuckman get an easy one. Looks to carefully get this out towards Peel. Trying to get it overhead there nicely. Winning the ball is Saro. Kick didn't quite have as much on as she intended, though. Baxter again. She's had 10 positions in this first quarter. South Fremantle with the answers at halfback again. Ball bobbling around. Pasco misses the ball with a kick. Anderson doesn't. She picks it up cleanly and gets it out. Saro in the way again. Pasco's recovered. Still battling with Anderson. Handball to no one in particular. Looks like Thompson comes at that one. Geordie, very young Peel player. Pickett just ahead of the footy. Goes long. Sitting back behind the ball. Nicely is Peel. See if they can begin their attack again. It's been turned over. South Fremantle having a little look in now. Couple little handballs. Tackled in the contest now. Just a bit of an arm wrestle at half back. South Fremantle well set again. This is Yugo outside of the right foot. To forward 50 in a space. Turning, being able to turn her opponent there. Stockwell. Stockwell's a long kick of the footy. Getting back Thompson. It's just gone a little shallow. Poppy Stockwell, you can see her kicking skills. And Thompson cast in the role of goal, uh, well, goal keeper there because uh, she knew the long shot was coming. Yeah, look, that forward pressure by South Fremantle has been outstanding. I think if Peel can get a little bit more value out of the possessions and carry that Neil Baxter's offering for them, I think she's, she's been outstanding across their half-back line and just that connection to their forwards and, and they might just be able to get a little bit more value for their possession. It's really our first glimpse at Poppy Stockwell, but she's a very talented sports person, good cricketer, and uh, a real goal sneak. South would love to get her involved in the game. There's a good mark from Pickett, who's starting to get a few touches. She wants to move it on quickly. Good option. Sends it towards the pocket. Stockwell's at the back of this one. Soccering at once. The Dogs try to get forward through Lansky. Top of the goal square. Reedy's there again. She'll apply a tackle here. Knocks the ball out of the hands of her opponent, then follows up and tackles Hayes. Loose footy comes out here for South. Quick snap from Boothman was blocked and Hayes follows up well. Then her kick smothered. Great pressure from both teams. Boothman gets a second crack and the kick looks good. Great goal from Boothman. And South have got the first two of the grand final. And it was a great contest down there, Joe. Both teams not prepared to let the ball go the other way too easily. And eventually the forward pressure of South Fremantle was too much. Yeah, and what a, what a finish there. We've seen now two beautiful kicks of goal by the South Fremantle forwards. Um, so, but the pressure, uh, two or three uh, smothers within that passage of play from both teams. So they're both up for the fight. And um, that was a really good finish there by Boothman for, for South Fremantle. Hayes, terrific rebound defence. The smother from Eugle just uh, caused a turnover and the goal. Back in the middle. Hayes to go at it. Jumping high. Strom on the ground. Coming, trying to come through there. Peel, it's Anderson. She goes long. She's been some good midfield minutes so far. Ball free. Again, forward 50. 
trapped by South Fremantle, but she's trapped in turn by a number of Peel players. The umpire's really letting this go on. The back now to Peel. Neat connect attempted, but just standing in the way has been Del Borello, and she's been the master of the turnover so far in this game. And her kick is a good one forward, unfortunately. No representation, although ball drops. Keeps the South Fremantle in it. They don't want to be dropping marks at the halfback. But anyway, this is Beth Schilling nice and clean to come out. This time denies Del Borello. It's Bilson. Goes past a fast player. Kylie Bilson towards halfback. A couple of different players moving in on this for South Fremantle. Peel done well to hold it up so far. Some, we can get a great view of some lovely jumper tugging and jumper pulling. Eventually, Bilson's pulled off the ball. She didn't have it. Eagle putting pressure on inside. South have amassed in numbers again. Straight over her face is Bilson. That's Maddie Rimmer trying to emerge with a footy. Unfortunately, he's stripped of it. Speedy forward, Maddie Rimmer. Just needs a, a little look and she can hurt you. This ball's in the middle of the ground. And bouncing for Finch before the siren goes. And ends what is a very entertaining quarter of Youth Girls footy. The Rogers Cup has gone, come up in leaps and bounds in the last two years. And, and Joe, this year, um, I've been really impressed with the whole, the, the skill level of the Rogers Cup and the coaching. Oh, absolutely. Look, I think um, two or three years ago, the Rogers Cup was really uh, an entry-level competition. And now it's, it's uh, uh, evolving into that genuine junior state level competition. Quarter time, South Fremantle, two goals, one. Peel, one behind. Reedy and Boothman, the goal kickers for South Fremantle. It's the first break of the Rogers Cup Grand Final for 2020. Hey, darling. Uh, so I was thinking maybe we could all go out for dinner. Oh, I wish, but I need to finish this prezzo. Oh, that's cool. I'll just take the kids. OK, all right, bye. Bring your family together. What? <laughs> New Optus Family Plan includes four Sims and the McAfee Safe Family App. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time, and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. The V6 Twin Turbo Rear Wheel Drive Kia Stinger. It took seven years to create and 4.9 seconds to understand why. If you need it live streamed, you need front row screens. Visit frontrowscreens.com.au. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time, and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. Quarter time in the Rogers Cup Grand Final. South Fremantle with the only two goals of the first term as the Peel coaching staff are having their say at the moment with their girls. Dave Lindsay, Clint Daggerbrot and Joe Taylor, your commentary team for the Rogers Cup Grand Final. And Joe, we've been pretty impressed with what we've seen in the first term. Yeah, absolutely. I think the skills have been right up there and both teams are up for the fight. Um, Ash Reedy's really caused some, some dramas for the Peel half-back line there uh, down half-forward for South. When she's not kicking goals, she's certainly um, got a hand in creating the scores for them. And Cruttenden, though she hasn't had a heap of the ball, her pace really has broken the line a couple of times. And I think 
for for Peel off the half back there. Baxter's just been she's been really good, and they've just got to find that connection to their half forwards in order to um to make sure that they get the score on the board. They're not going to get a whole heap of opportunities, but I think if they if they can capitalise on the ones that they get, that they're they're certainly in with a really good chance in this game. Always a bit of breeze up here at June. We don't have a windsock to uh, assist us to let us know exactly which way it's blowing, but it normally favours the left of the screen a little bit, as we see some of the highlights from the first quarter. So it will be interesting to see if Peel can get a bit of an advantage in this quarter. They'll kick with the advantage of that breeze in the second term. And it's always a tremendous surface up here as well. So it's good to see women's footy being played up here. West Perth, of course, have a team in the reserves and uh, were beaten in the preliminary final last week. So won't be here on grand final day, but uh, they've got aspirations, of course, to join the league competition at some stage in the near future. Oh, absolutely. And we caught the end of that game last week and they were certainly coming home pretty strong and unlucky to, to not get the chockies in the end. But judging from the beautiful trees around here, I think <laughs> you are right. It's probably left a screen. So it'll be good to see if Peel can capitalise and get some forward half pressure in this quarter. It normally whistles straight in through the Lesbom Gates, which is at uh, half back on the right-hand side of your screen, heading towards half uh, forward on the left hand side of the screen as well so normally favours the uh, the left of your screen as we'll see Peel attacking that end in this second quarter. Caitlin Hayes will start on the ball. She had a couple of uh, important inputs into the game in the first quarter. Got the, uh, the zinc on the cheeks as well as a number of the Peel players do. They're going to enjoy today's action no matter what the result and uh, probably need a bit more from Caitlin Hayes. I'm sure she'll be looking for a big uh, second term to get her team right back into it. It's the Bulldogs and the Thunder. And grand final day still to come. Of course, the reserves. East Fremantle will take on uh, Subiaco. Is that right? Uh, Claremont, Claremont in the Claremont reserves. Yep. Last week. Of course, we saw Claremont beat West Perth last week and uh, the big league match to finish things off here today. Peel Thunder in their first league grand final playing Subiaco. So a bit of a repeat of what we saw in the men's competition the middle stages of the last decade when those two clubs met on a couple of occasions. Was, uh, it's a chance here for Peel to go forward first, but South Fremantle threw Garlett in the weight. Couldn't really get much of a possession there. Del Borello had an outstanding first quarter, and Cronin was pretty good as well. They combined to get it towards Ella Ward. Her kick's going to come back the other way. It's a kick from Hayes. Got good distance, but again, Bulldogs set up well behind the ball, and it's Tara Garlett who's... Uh, been in a good position across half back, but this time a kick lets her down, and that's gone wide. It'll be a free kick to Peel with no one having touched it. Tara Garlett's played a little bit of senior football, so I'd expect that she'll set herself up well across that half back line and create some real drive forward for the for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have been very good at bringing on their kids this year. That's another safe intercept defensive mark this time by Holly Denham. Denham loads up towards the middle of the ground. Caitlin Hayes seems to have taken some control across the centre of the ground, unless well, you can't complete this mark. The ball now in dispute. Trying to emerge with the footy and run was Ever Innes. Hayes hacks the ball forward towards 50. A little pick up and sidestep, nicely done. Looks like Matty Rimmer, long ball in. Was it touched? It's going to trickle towards the line. It could be the first goal, but it isn't. It's the second point. Peel Thunder attacking the goal face immediately. Playing on with some dash out of fullback. South Fremantle kicks wide off hands and then we'll have a ball in. Quite catch the number of that player that dashed out from fullback. Looked like 19, but there's not one on my list. <laughs> I was looking at the scoreboard, quickest scoreboard in the West here. Lance Catchpole <laughs> running the scoreboard over there, Diggs. Is he actually in I think he is. That, board? that little window, he just pops his head out of the window. We might get a shot of him a bit later on today. He's uh, a stalwart of the West Perth Footy Club. And I think any time there's a game of football up here, he seems to man the scoreboard and he's, he's positioned there again today. As they've made it to the middle of the ground here, South Fremantle. And it's Boothman who kicked an important goal in the first. Tumbles her kick forward, just didn't quite make the contact she would have liked. And instead it's going to come back through Jessica Edwards. Although that kick hasn't worked out as well as Peel would have hoped. And Jetton's been dispossessed. And Cruttenden having an impact in this second quarter, as she did in the first. Her speed and her tackling have been impressive already. That kick didn't spin perfectly off the boot, but it gets good distance. They're under pressure in defence here again, Peel. All the feedback hand pass will really put them under the pump. Thompson over the football being hassled. Can South produce something here? A rush behind a Peel, and they manage just to avoid any real danger. Two-goal lead to the Bulldogs. They defended that well in the end there, Peel. They were under some real pressure with uh, Tate Lansley running through to, to try and get a sneaky one off the ground. Again. Immediate play from Beth Pascoe, it's in the hands of Crutton and she was looking to connect with Mann. Ball bouncing around, that's Cronin, dispossessed. 
umpire blindsided. Man again. And the team, team tackling from the Peel Thunder. Cronin angry with herself about her tiny little fumble. She should be proud of her game so far, however. It's Hayes. Jumping in the ruck and clearly winning Hayes, but it'll be Del Borello again behind the ball. She's stripped of it, trying to scoop the ball up on the run there. It was Trivdeck. Hacked forward now by Peel. The flies go up. Can't quite get a handle on it. It's Rimmer. She's flying through forward 50. Wide entry looking for Thompson. Just saw her sister do it at the other end. She's looking to square the footy up. It's good vision. First there, South from Amel, however. They're actually taking a little push off and play on. Nicely done. This time Delbrello in front of the ball, but she's got Pasco for company. Pasco generally clean below her knees. Is in this case, but she's immediately tackled. The ball's now spat out. There's a little high tackle. If Pasco will get this to the square. Shakira Pickett through the mark. <laughs> Very dangerous in the grand final. Pasco gets a bit of a floater. Hits some dangerous space in front and roving the ball behind, running onto it. She can't quite get it. Turns back into tra traffic rather than soccering off the ground. Dumps it. South Manor player on the ground in the goal square. And a little, a very small, almost comedy of errors. Both teams just opening the door and then shutting it on each other. Shauna Bicker it was down there. He's a sneaky forward. Couldn't quite find the way to goal. They try to soccer off the deck there, Jess Edwards. Comes out the back. That kick was been smothered again, and South Fremantle will clear it through Garlett. High ball for them to stand underneath, and that's good judgment. Will it be paid? No. Thought Clarkson had a lot of that one, but the umpire decided not enough for a mark. Now she goes to ground. Peel win it away. Good dash again from Baxter. Been Peel's best so far. This kick will go right to the teeth of the goal square. But just fading away on that breeze, I reckon, Joe, and it's missed to the right. But Peel's starting to get some real momentum in this game. Yeah, they're just starting, starting to get some sustained pressure in the forward half. So they really need to capitalise on, on this whilst they've got the momentum. I think Rimmer's been really important for them across half forward there. She's, she's really given them a couple of good looks at it. And, um, and I expect that they'll start to capitalise on, on this domination in, in the first few minutes of this quarter fairly soon. Well, it's difficult to commentate a game, Diggs, when the technicians walk right across in front of where you're watching. <laughs> and then set them on cords. I couldn't hear anything for a little while. I think they've just come back on now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Crutton and hands and knees at the top of 50 for South Fremantle. Coming through the other way is Bella Mann. She's held up beautifully by Cruttenden. Both those players still involved. That's in the box seat if they can spill the ball forward. But it falls into the hands of the Peel Thunderbirds. They go long. Camped in the square. Looks to be Garlett. Hits her on the noggin and goes over the line. Although front on contact paid. Garlett plays off from <laughs> behind the goals and, and over about the 15 fence. 15 metres wide. Halfway up the hill from the grand cinema side. I like the attitude. Young lady, Tara Garlett. Joe said played some senior footy this year and last the Peel Thunder last year. She turns the ball over, unfortunately. It's a Nell Baxter who can't do anything but keep collecting possessions, Joe. No, nah, and she's a fairly good user of the ball too, so this should go right through to the teeth of goal. If not, she might be able to get it on the wind and, and get a nice long kick in there. Well, she'd like to be on the run, I think, Nell. She does hoist this up. It's one for the Flyers. Only fly there was from South Fremantle. All the Peel girls staying down. Seeing it over the line is Shauna Bicker. And we're on throw-in watch here, Deggers. Where's it going to go? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we've got the professionals in. So talk to Greg Gilby. He's put uh, two young, promising boundary umpires in today, both female. They're running the whole deck themselves, and they certainly know the rules. Throw up favours South from Allen. Love the little tap down there from Ward, who's done some good work against Hayes today. Meanwhile, a little shove in the back behind the plate. Falls in the hands of Peel once more. It's Emma Innes. Blowing blind locks today. She pops the ball up to benefit a teammate who does take the mark. I'm sure the ball travelled as far and as long as she intended to in us. It's a neat, neat catch in front of her body. She's not quite sure about the distance, I think, and taps the breeze. Doing a fair bit of tap dancing there. Lifts the ball up in the end. Flies again. This time less flies from Peel. Ball does carry over the back. Del Borello robbing her of the ball's bigger. Bicker turns on her right foot, pulls it to the top of the square. It's a dangerous kick, 3v1. If you can square the ball out here, End up with a goal. She can't quite get ball from hand to foot. Looks like Jess Edwards. It'd be interesting to see if Peel can get someone on the move here. Well, Edwards wants to take it out of the ruck herself. So hey. off the deck, and that's good enough. It's a goal the way of Peel by Thompson. And gee, they were threatening for a long, long time. They had it locked not only within their 50, but within about 25 of goal. And it really seemed only a matter of time before South Fremantle's uh, defence would crack. And it was just a soccer off the deck. That's all it needs, Joan. They've got their first. Yeah, sometimes it's the simple things that are the best. And um, that was 
really good stoppage play. She just kept herself free, and, and when the ball hit the deck, uh, quick thinking and, and just poked it through. It took a while, <laughs> but they got there first. They were just right back in it. We're just getting some teasing from uh, some listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Describing this episode as Reggie and the Fat Man. <laughs> That's a throwback there, yeah. Daggers. That's my, my children talking about my uh, lack of fitness, perhaps Hayes in the middle. Sorry, Reg. <laughs> you should have been calling that centre bounce. No, that's all good. <laughs> Nattering away to as my children tease me on the call. Thanks, Hayson. Ball in the air. <laughs> Hayes, big run up. Great tap down. Ball's at the back. Del Barella overruns it. One of the rare fumbles today. It's in the hands of Pickett. She gets the ball forward towards Reedy. Reedy's able to complete the catch, and it's all opening up in front for, for South. Reedy plays on now. The smother is terrific from Schilling, although Reedy gets it back. Tumble punt forward. In fact, ends up being an upside down torpedo. Gets towards the defensive area for Peel. They're going to have to do got some work to do through Barton. Deal of length in the game in front of the ball too. It's an arm wrestle there amongst about four or five people coming out of the pack and attempting to. Look like Boothman falls and then kick towards 50. Hayes is set up in front of the footy in this occasion. Beth Pascoe misses the tackle. Ball inside to Pickett. She can't find the handle either. Hobbling around again. Lots of pressure from either side, Joe. Looks pretty good. Yeah, uh Sorry, emerging with man. I threw you under the bus there. <laughs> Trip deck over the back. She gets the ball forward again. She, she turns around, Bicker, and almost takes a catch off her ear. She's now got a battle to get the ball forward. Sweeping down the back line was beautiful. And she gets the ball, although in the transition, Hiller set up fortuitously because it hadn't moved forward as quick. It's Thompson through her hands. Bicker again. Handball indiscriminate. Bicker does some bull, bullish work. Top of 50. She's been under holding the ball. Seems to be trying to make the play. Look, a lovely tackle from Kanakosa, who's had a good season in the back line for Souths. Kick will go to the outer side. Nicely judged in the air. And the Bulldogs have the mark through Finch. Her kick to the wing. Oh, oh nice little bit of work in the end. Thought the people were going to win that one away, but in the end, South do. Eugle had it. It's shilling in the way this time for Peel. Into the middle of the ground. Big ball to be won right here. Attacking it hard again was Innes. Now she's caught with the footy. It'll be a ball up. They're certainly not holding back as you'd expect on grand final day. No, and I think Peel have just been able to hold their structure a little bit better in this quarter. Um, they were set up really well behind the ball in the first quarter, but they've just lengthened the field and kept their forward structure. And we're seeing that result in, um, in some score on the board. Midway through this second term. Pickett. Sends south forward again. Standing up in defence, but the ball gets over the back here for Peel. Clearing away. Might work out okay. Schilling diving in, couldn't quite take the mark. Cronin keeps it alive. Now South Mountain Flat was strong. Gets it forward. And now an opportunity for the dogs through Yugle. Gets around her opponent. Has time for a bounce. Wants to take them all on. Could she finish? Kick looks okay. Drifts left. Exciting stuff there from the Bulldogs. Unfortunately, just a miss in the end from Eugle, but South are threatening, kicking to the right of the screen into the breeze. It was an important win there by Indy Strom at half forward as well, just to get that ball out to, to Eugle. Um, fairly famous South Fremantle name there, so good to see the next generation coming through. On the kick from Gunton, although it's intercepted by Boothman. Boothman will get this right back from where it came from. She pulls the kick a little, trying to favour Eugle at the front. Can't quite get it done, Thompson. Pushes Hugo out of the side, tries to win the ball for South. Hugo back feeds good to Cronin. Cronin gets a right kick inside out forward. Waiting on the goal line. Defending that goal line is Peel. Goalkeeping still a thing. It certainly works. And that was Shani Barton behind the ball. Probably saved a goal. Got two goalkeepers now. <laughs> so hopefully someone smothers the boot. It's bouncing around. Looks like Hugo again. Tackled to the ground and caught for holding the ball. That Ash Reedy. She's just holding her knee down there, Ash Reedy. So hopefully it's nothing too significant. And um, and they're able to have a quick look at her and and she gets up and she's okay. Yeah, it looked like just a little corky in that tackle. So hopefully just a little bit in there on knee. And her knee's gone asleep and we can get her up now. She's uh, had a very good quarter and a half. She's been... Pretty much the, the, the per person threatening to break the game open up forward for South Fremantle. They're going to help her to her feet, which hopefully is good signs. Meanwhile, there's a Peel player also getting some attention down there as well. So 
This explains why when that tackle came, they both just laid on the ground <laughs> together. They were both in a bit of pain. Both players helped to their feet, as, as Reggie called. And who's in the hands of the trainer? Is that I think it might be Thompson for Peel. Who's Thompson for Peel finding it hard to put any weight on her right leg. And Reedy already has the left knee strapped, so there's a previous issue there. Actually, Jordan Thompson, too, working deep into defence. Was the goal kicker before Charlie, her sister, staunch defender. Reedy's now under her own power, which is terrific to see. So, players coming across towards the bench. Just to see if Time On's been called. And they're going to give Thompson a. A half carry off the ground. Reedy's continuing to wander off by herself with the physio just alongside her. So, certainly a delay in the game. We're at the 14 minute mark. We're playing 18 minutes straight in the Rogers Cup. So, yeah, we might tick over past the 18 minute mark this time. Be interesting to see what the umpires have decided there. Whether normally with a knee injury we get a delay, but with neither player stretch it off, I'm not sure whether the clock. Would have been stopped or not. Schilling again getting through some heavy traffic well. Off to Innes who's played a good game so far. Kicks from an area where South have a lot more numbers and Holly Denham has done this on a couple of occasions already this morning. Setting herself up nicely behind the football and judging these intercept mark opportunities although the kick falling short. And Innes is there yet again. Definitely a slight advantage to the left with the breeze and it's certainly working across the field towards the outer side. A lot of play being played that right half forward, right forward pocket area for Peel in this quarter. Denham holding up in a tackle again, eventually taken to ground. And we'll see a ball up at half forward now for Peel. They've kicked the only goal of the quarter. It was through Thompson, who's now off the ground with an injury. Sirhoy, neat little handball back. Split the play up initially. It's going to favour Crutton. And Crutton has got some space to move, which is never good for an opposition team. She <laughs> steps one player, she steps another. Not easy to step Nell back, so Nell Bax is on the chase now. Crutton, the number one ranked under 18 sprinter in Australia. That's what you're seeing on your screen. Gunton to Pascoe. Pascoe plays on straight away. Got him on the counter attack now with Bilson ahead of the play with plenty of time and space. Peel have got this game stretched out now. This kick just has to carry. It does. Trivdeck can't quite complete the mark, but she's got good skills off ground level. Pulls the kick a little, favours Bicker. Is it Bicker? She takes a catch in front of her face. It's not Bicker. What? Neat play, harassing Crutton enough to cause an issue. Terrific approach, very deliberate. Gets behind this, gets some lift. The goal umpire does a little bit of work, and unfortunately, it's just gone a little shallow. Did you catch that number? Shelly. Shelly. Really good work out in front of her face, and really good kick to advantage. Absolutely. That was all the way down the field that Peel were able to kick that to advantage. Um, it was the best. Best passage of play we've seen today. So hopefully as the game opens up, we see some more of those skills on, on show from both teams. Positioned her body at the perfect angle that you couldn't quite see the second number on her back or on her front. <laughs> you could see the two. I knew it wasn't number two. So this ball's gone out of playoff hands. We'll see a boundary throw in. And Peel have done a good job winning this sort of situation earlier this quarter where they've been able to hold things up and just lock the ball in their attacking half. And the repeat stoppages and surges forward have been enough to put South's defence under a lot of pressure. Cronin had the ball for a moment. Pickett has it now. It's not coming out from there. So another ball up required. Dogs by five. Getting close to the half-time siren. 18-minute quarters in Rogers Cup. But there may have been a delay with those injuries earlier this quarter. We'll wait to see whether the umpires have allowed some extra time or not. Tackle applied again on Innes who started the game well in the first term and continued on in the same fashion this quarter. Jess Edwards in there fighting hard for Peel as well. Soro lurking. Umpire might, might need to blow the whistle here. It's not coming out. Certainly not coming out cleanly. And we will get a ball up now at half forward. Such an important time, Joe, just before half time. A goal either way could make a big difference in what will be a fairly low scoring game. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Peel have kicked, I think, one goal two in this quarter. So if they could sneak another one in before the siren, I think they'd be very happy with their uh, with their output. Emma <laughs> Rennes was just showing the umpire she was attempting to get the ball out. Well, Amanda's ripped it out of her hands and got a forward 50. This looks like Gunton on the far side. It's man again, apologies. Picking the ball up again and surging forward. Peel, skinny side. Not being able to complete the catch out there, the defenders from south. Been very good in their intercept marking. It's back with Innes. She paddles it in front of her. She's got a battle now at ground level. 
with Cronin. They both picked themselves up and Siren Sound. So no time on <laughs> allowed for a very extended delay. Here with the breeze would have been banging on the table in there, although that coaching group's pretty calm and professional. I'd suggest there'd be no table banging over that kind of thing. Entertaining, or well, another entertaining quarter. Really punctuated by intercept marking. Um, been really impressed with South's attempt to connect by foot. But defensive marking has been a feature of today's game. Absolutely. I think both half-back lines have been uh, fairly dominant. With Peel, have Baxter and Innes have really started to get some, some good intercepting and good running. And you, Di Borello, I think, down there for South has also, since, since the opening bounce, has just played that role really well. So um, hopefully the sun keeps shining and we see some more skills as the game goes on. Only goal of the second quarter was through Jordan Thompson of Peel. Reedy and Boothman kicked goals in the first quarter. So Reedy and Thompson, the two players that have uh, been infected, but forward both off with injuries at the moment. Hopefully we'll see them back in the second half. They've both got some ice packs, one around the leg of uh, Thompson, and Reedy's carrying her ice packs. So that might be good news that she's had enough of the ice and she wants to get back out there. We'll see whether she will be back out in the third quarter. It's half time. In the Rogers Cup Grand Final, South Fremantle by five points. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time, and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. If you need it live streamed, you need front row screens. Visit frontrowscreens.com.au. The V6 Twin Turbo Rear Wheel Drive Kia Stinger. It took seven years to create and 4.9 seconds to understand why. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. Hey darling, uh, so I was thinking maybe we could all go out for dinner. <sighs> I wish, but I need to finish this prezzo. Oh, that's cool. I'll just take the kids. OK, all right, bye. Thank you. Champagne, sir? Yeah. Bring your family together. What? Oh. New Optus Family Plan includes four Sims and the McAfee Safe Family App. the halftime break in the Rogers Cup Grand Final. South Fremantle taking on Peel Thunder and the Bulldogs lead it by five points at the long change. 2-3-15, players 1-4-10. Goals to Reedy and Boothman for the Bulldogs in the first quarter and then Jordan Thompson kicked a goal in the second quarter for Peel. So all the goals have been to the left of your screen. And there's a good crowd in here as well. There's five clubs involved across Grand Final Day with the reserves to follow this between East Fremantle and Claremont and then Subiaco taking on Peel in the league decider later today for the Waffle Women's Premiership for 2020. Dave Lindsay, Clint Deggerot and Joe Taylor, your commentary team this afternoon as we look at some of the highlights from the second quarter. And Joe, Peel managed to lock the ball in their attacking half for long periods. And South's defence held up pretty well. They only really cr cracked on the one occasion, but uh, Peel have got themselves right back into the contest. Yeah, on more than one occasion, it looked like South might have been caught out, but they were able to transition back really well and just put that little bit of pressure on and, um, and create uh, Peel either not, not scoring or just getting the points rather than the maximum. So South's coaching panel will be pretty happy with the way that their, their deep defenders were able to transition back and not give away free kicks, which is really easy to do when you're a bit desperate. So, so they've done really well back there. Dex, you mentioned before we went to the break at halftime that the half-back lines of both teams have really had a big impact on the game. We've seen Beth Schilling 
for Peel doing a great job setting up behind the ball so, so far. Also Innes and Baxter as wingers dropping back behind the footy as well. And South with the likes of Del Barello doing a great job in the same sort of role. And Holly Denham also taking some good marks. Yeah, no, they've been really good. Um, both, both clubs have, have been out of blood a lot of their players, particularly South this year. So uh, Boothman's played league footy. Um, Hunter Cronin really benefited from a couple of games. Poppy Stockwell's had a taste. So going up there playing league and training and then coming back, I reckon that really sets a standard for these players. So Peel uh, train with their league side often, and they certainly do through their pre-season. So I think the standard that's being set is a standard because the girls are able to uh, see how good they want to be and how good they need to be trained that way and then be able to execute on Grand Final Day overhead um, in what is what is, what is at the moment great conditions. It's really impressive to watch. Just had some great shots of the crowd that are in here. Always get good numbers in for the Rogers Cup. All the parents and family are in and then obviously a lot of people just with a general interest around Grand Final Day as well and they're enjoying the conditions that are here. At the moment we're expecting some rather grim weather where they're coming for the league game which is unfortunate. Let's hope that it holds off and maybe the rain comes after the final siren today. But it is great to see South Fremantle in today's Rogers Cup Grand Final during a year that the club celebrates it's its 120th birthday. Now let's take a look at a terrific video highlighting the commitment, love and passion so many people have for the Bulldogs. In 2020, the South Fremantle Football Club is 120 years old, established in 1900. So this year is a, a significant year and a, and a milestone year that we're all really keen to celebrate. And 120 years is the catalyst to just get so many people all together and have five minutes just to look back on, on what has been achieved over that 120 years. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, um, I couldn't change from here. I wouldn't change anyhow, and I couldn't. My kids say this is my second home. Well, it is, because <laughs> I love it so much. There's no other club like South Fremantle, even though I married a East Fremantle chap, but it, didn't take him long to change. You know, a lot of footy clubs are similar once you get inside, but, you know, coming into South Fremantle, uh, the people are probably, well, they are the strength, you know, that's why we want to be involved, so um, loved every minute of it. The people here are just so caring and, and so welcoming and it makes you feel so comfortable being away from home. So the whole social aspect, it was almost like a whole other family at the footy club that you could just feel comfortable around and have fun with. My family is actually a big supporter of South Fremantle, so I remember coming down here when I was younger and watching the boys play, and my dad just taking me down since I was little, so it's, it's a club I love, so it's the club I support and I want to play for them as well. So whoever uh, is invested in the footy club is part of one big family, um, and they support each other and, and cheer when we win, but more importantly, I think they're always around us when, when things don't go well. Even though I'd never been here, it was a sort of homecoming in a way that my dad was here and made such a name and, and left such a good impression on people that, you know, there's, there's already been people that I've met and they've told me stories about my dad. The great thing about the Rioli family is not only their obvious football ability, they're just such good people and they've contributed to the club in many, many ways. They were lovely, really lovely and it was great to watch them play football. As a relative newcomer to the football club, I've just been effectively overwhelmed by some of the names of players who have, who have donned the famous Red V here at South Fremantle. I've got a book at home which was presented to me by Brian Sikatosko, former CEO, and all that goes back from the start when the club first started. And just reading all that memorabilia in there, it's fantastic. I think um, being able to feel a part of a club that's, that's not just women has been, you know, just such an amazing feeling and we just feel so accepted by the club. Our opportunities arise to come in to play the Waffle League and that's a big challenge for the girls and we're looking forward to grabbing the opportunity. We're lucky to be a part of it in the 120th year and, you know, we'll do everything we can to, um, you know, make it a successful year on the field as well. We can't wait to finally start our 120th season and we'll see you at the football. It's the 120th year of the South Fremantle Footy Club, their men's team finishing top of the league table into a second semi-final tomorrow against Claremont. And on the women's side of things, well, their Rogers Cup team are leading the grand final at the moment by five points over Peel Thunder. 
It's been a good start to their day so far and they'll be hoping for a big third quarter when they have the breeze in just a couple of moments. It's the Dogs are leading the Thunder by five points. We'll take a break and be back with all the second half action in just a moment. The V6 Twin Turbo Rear Wheel Drive Kia Stinger. It took seven years to create and 4.9 seconds to understand why. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. together. Introducing Optus Family Plan with four SIMs and 250 gigs of data to share. If you need it live streamed, you need front row screens. Visit frontrowscreens.com.au. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time, and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. Here come the Bulldogs back out onto the ground ahead of the third quarter. They're sitting on a five-point lead over Peel Thunder in the Rogers Cup Grand Final at the halftime break. Dave Lindsay, Clint Degabrot and Joe Taylor, your commentary team here this morning for this decider. Played in fantastic conditions, bright sunshine, a bit of breeze just blowing towards the left of your screen. But really the conditions probably couldn't be any better for this decider. We're hoping it stays this way for as long as possible today. The forecast doesn't look too flash, but... Uh, we're definitely hoping that uh, maybe this good weather might last a bit longer than expected. And uh, the league game later today, which will be played between Subiaco and Peel, can be played under similar conditions. Joe, you've seen a bit of uh, both Subi and Peel this year in the league. Which way are you leaning in the uh, the league decider? Oh, look, I think um, Subi have been the benchmark all year and really have for the last two years. They've finished on top of the ladder both years and they've just got so much experience that, you know, Peel, I think, if they can get a run on, certainly capable, but my tip would be Subi. Should be a fantastic game. Definitely looking forward to that, but we've got a big second half still to come here in the Rogers Cup Grand Final. All the goals kicked to the left of screen so far. South Fremantle will have that opportunity in this quarter. A throw picked out, and getting the free kick will be Hunter Cronin, who was one of South's better players in the first half. Kicks to open space at half forward. You can see Reedy back out there. She's not in this contest. She's a kick away. That's good to see for South Fremantle. Under pressure, Jetton gets a kick away. Coming through is Pasco. She's knocked over. <laughs> Almost got a free kick, but not paid. South have set up behind the ball well again, and it's Ugal. She's been pretty important for South to this point as well. Up comes Poppy Stockwell, a long way from her forward line. She's normally pretty composed, but she's got too many Thunder players to beat, and she's caught. I think, Deg, she thought there was only one player pursuing her, but it turned out when she spun out of the first tackle, she was going to be wrapped up by one of two or three other Thunder players. Yeah, she's very very good at finding space behind the stoppage. There just wasn't any in that occasion. So worth a try, though. She held the ball in beautifully rather than coughing up in the corridor. So hats off, Nell Baxter. Meanwhile, trying to fight for this ball again, get her third quarter started or complete or continue her fantastic game. Man emerges and hits Trivdeck on the chest. Sorry, that's not Trivdeck. Curry. It's Curry. Tayana. You did in the preseason. In the grand final, it's terrific fighting down there 
as she's been doing today, is Kanakosa. Trivdek now pulls the ball around her shoulder and hits it to Kanakosa, who plays on quickly for space. Now we're back to having a look at that. Geez, that's a great right defensive <laughs> ball bounce. <laughs> Gains an extra 25 metres just with an end to end. Handball inside's untidy. He'll get a quick look in, but too sharp for South. They get the ball tumbling forward towards Pickett. Pickett props and steps and pulls this around the corner, but Beth Schilling wise to that. They've done a bit of training together at the State Academy, those two. Would have been in the 18 side together in 2020. Got a chance to play together next week, actually, when the All Stars teams get announced. It's Baxter again. Looking like she should be an all-star. This ball's kicked towards Rosie Anderson, who takes a neat intercepting mark again. Eugle breaks, and Crapton's on the far side. So, little block off the ball's clever from Eugle. Advantage here. And Crapton's picked up that ball and taken off. She's kicked it towards the defensive team. Is that Johansson with the ball in hand? Surveying her options. South have got the ground covered off nicely. Looks for Hayes. It carries her. It's going to be fortu fortunate because it's going to go into the path of Mann. Mann's tackled straight away. It's able to get the ball to Innes. Innes a quick kick into the middle of the ground. Competed well from both players then. Kanakosa. Cannon into by Vickers. The ball is uh, just about on the bullseye. Get another restart in the restart position. We've just seen South try to use the corridor a little bit more so far in the first couple of minutes of this quarter. So really trying to take advantage of that wind that they've got. Certainly looks as though you can get a bit of distance kicking into it though. So it's not impossible to score to the right despite the fact neither team has found a goal just yet. Boothman is looking for this ball. So too is Reedy. Recovered from that knee injury earlier. She might have more problems here because she's been caught. It's a throw. Fine tackle in defence. And it's Corley who has the free kick. Might turn it over though. Bounce wasn't kind to Cruttenden and then her tackle a little high. <laughs> and she went back to win the football back and Jetton will get a free kick for Peel. So, so far the Thunder defence are holding up in this third term. Tumbling kick in towards Shelley. Couldn't take the mark but she's good enough to hold it up here against three. And just as the ball was ripped out by Darcy Clements, the umpire's whistle went. So Clements thought she was away. No opportunity though. Ward in the ruck. Good leap. Wins it down. Innes coming through for Peel. Now Cronin gives it off to Clements. Generally combined pretty well, those two. Here's Stockwell. Oh. What a great pair of hands she's got. We'd love to see her get really involved in this third quarter. Penetrating kick into the pocket. Just a bit too much for the leading Lansky. But they will get a stoppage in the right forward pocket, and that's a pretty good spot for the ball to be in. But great mark, Joe Taylor, there. We just saw from Poppy Stockwell. Just a glimpse of what she can do. Absolutely. Really strong hands. One grab. Um, the confidence to just to leap at the footy and, and then a nice penetrating kick in forward too. So hopefully South Fremantle can, can make something of this forward for a Hey, Tuckerman, good job of watching Reedy in this situation. Pasco trying to get the ball forward, shoving forward was back. So pulling this around the corner. It's a neat kick and it's a goal from the Ruckman who's moved forward. That is Ella Ward and it's a terrific snap from 40 out. Got the bounce beautifully, no goalkeeper in for Peel. And Ward adds to her good work in the ruck with a goal deep in the forward line. Absolutely. She's had a very good game so far with her ruck work. Um, if not winning most of the taps, she's certainly uh, certainly giving her, her midfielders some really good um, first use of the ball. So for her to drift forward just adds another element to her game and something else for the Peel rucks to have a think about. And, um, and hopefully that she can continue to do that and, um, and really create some more havoc for them. Ward and Hayes contest this. Umpire's not happy with something. Getting the head count right. Out of position and South Fremantle receiving a warning for not having enough in the square. Mm, too many forwards. <laughs> many forwards. A well, seven-man forward line's not a bad <laughs> option, but you'd want to back it up with a six-man midfield. I reckon it's the best position on the ground, isn't it? Loose player Seventh in the forward line. <laughs> uh, you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> Not good enough to be loose anywhere across the ground. So work by Ward to Del Borello. Del Borello tackle without it. Ward again. She's done a power of work since kicking her goal. And beforehand, she's been touched on the shoulder. She'll get a free kick to start this up. Crutton on the far side. Goes further than her. In fact, probably favours Mann in the end. Trailing her player in there. The, the south forward. So Mann does get there first. She comes back inside looking for her right foot. The right foot goes to Ward. So Ward just having a moment. Although she drops his footy. The handball's off beautifully to a running Clements who can't get the kick away. Ripped out of the back of the ball there was 
was a uh, appeal play without it. Hamble ends up with Crutman. She's burst away. Inside 50 looks pretty good. Stockwell in the box seat coming across at the last minute to chop that ball off. The peel defender was terrific and she's engaged in a tackle from Stockwell Ooh. now. Holding the ball. And she's been called for holding the ball now. A bit rough on McKay Tuckerman. The defense, the, the spoil was terrific on Stockwell because oh, Stockwell she's got had 50 that as well. Up. Must have, uh, must have uh, said something that didn't need to be said, perhaps. Okay, Tuckerman had an argument for not having pride, but once that decision's made, there's no point engaging. And Stockwell's got a Monty from the top of the square because she's a solid, solid kick of the footy. Going to kick this better than Todd Goldstein from this position. She smacks it through and it's all clear. Just like that, AFL football. Is that how you kick a snagger from the top of the square? Poppy Stockwell starting to threaten. Reggie caught it off air and on air that he wants to see her light up and it looks like she has joe absolutely she's she's really uh stepped up in this quarter and she's a beautiful finisher it would have been tough from that pocket with the way the wind's blowing so the 50 meters certainly um made her eyes light up there and and made no mistake it's interesting sometimes a player just gets a taste for it she chased the ball up the ground got a position on the wing and then got caught in the middle of the ground but at least got involved in the game she seemed to have been camped deep forward for the whole first half joe and just didn't get near it the way the game has been played between the half back lines. Yeah, and I think again that strong mark that she took at half forwards just maybe given her that little bit of a confidence and she's up and about now. And as we said earlier, she's a beautiful kick of the football, so you don't want it in her hands if you peel. Critical time here for the Thunder. Biggest lead of the game for South Fremantle. And Peel do respond initially here. They get it half to half forward. Bilston. She's had plenty of touches of the football today. Could have been a free kick on that occasion to Bicker. No free kick paid. And on the way back out, Clarkson takes a mark for South. And their defence has been strong throughout the day. It's a good long kick. Goes through the hands there of Finch. Here with numbers around the fall of the ball. Well, that kick just lets them down on this occasion. And marking in defence. It's an opportunity again for Clarkson to repel for South Fremantle. Into the middle of the ground she goes with her kick. They look threatening at the moment, the Bulldogs. Anderson, good contest with Schilling. Recovery from Anderson was outstanding. The kick goes bouncing towards Stockwell. She wants this footy. Charges past two opponents. Spins onto the right, into the pocket with her kick. Lansky is there. Can't take it. Thompson gets back first for Peel. She's caught by Lansky. Ball spills out. Thunder have plenty of support, though. Johansson up against the boundary. It's a good clearing kick and a nice bounce for her as well. Couldn't have played that any better. It's gone out of play inside the 50 metre arc, so we'll see a boundary throwing. Poppy Stockwell certainly up and about. That was some really good uh, fast movement through there and just and left everyone in her wake, really. Scything run. Liked uh, Whitelaw behind the ball, too. Wins a crucial one on one to get that ball in to give Stockwell her shot. Thompson defending nicely on the last line. Ball thrown in outside 50. Flipping on it this time. It's Clarkson. She turns it over to Gunton. Not enough from Gunton yet. Fine player. Someone that could really kickstart the thunder. Gunton, sleek skills, really reads the play well. Ball moves towards the centre of the ground, far wing. Much of the game's been played on that side. Players trying to hide from their coaches and no mistakes can be seen perhaps. It's Sir Hoy. Sorry, it's Sir Rowe. Play football with a young man called Sir Hoy. He's spelled his name very similarly, but it's Sir Rowe. Sleek mover herself too. Part of Fremantle's NGA Academy this year. Got a bit of a future in footy, I think, also SBL basketballer. Plenty of talent out there in this game. Flying through this time, Whitelaw. Ball is repelled from South Mantle's attacking half by Peel. Sounds pretty logical, Joe. Trying to break free now, Peel. Looks like Mel backs up. She misses the footy by foot. And it's good pressure from South around the ball. Just continue to really, really harass the Peel players. Although this kick favours Peel. Spills over the line. Well, I assume that's what the players will be after on the far side. Regardless, the umpire will give us a restart. Bang on, or bang, and bang on the centre, but on the furthest possible way to get from us without going over the fence. <laughs> it's also hard to make rotations when the ball's on that side as well, so it's a good option if you want to stay on the field. Keep it close to the far boundary line, and it's pretty hard for the coach to take you off. Free kick paid here for out of bounds on the full, so Peel will get it. McKay Tuckerman to take the kick. And she wants to bring one of her teammates in to take the kick, I think. The umpire said, no, no, it's yours. And now there's 50 because South Mantle player charged at the play. We do see that it's a bit in women's footy, Joe, where 
They get the hurry up whistle, and a lot of players assume that is play on, and they go charging at the play with the ball and give away 50. Yep, you, you'd think they'd learn, <laughs> but um, maybe they'll learn after this one. Spoken like a coach. I was going to say, it sounded like a coach that's been burnt with that a couple of times in her coaching career. It's very frustrating to watch, but it is the rules, and it could have almost been a free kick. Good tackle applied. Or oh, Denham's been slung into the ground. That was vicious. I don't think it was the intention of Hayes when she went in there for the tackle. It was a bit of momentum. And uh, she looks a little bit concerned for her opponent there as well, standing on the mark. Looks like Jordan. Looks back like Jordan, Jordan, Thompson. Jordan Thompson's back on the ground. That's terrific. So she's got a lot of strapping on her right calf, but Denham has some concerns with that head knock into the turf. That's the sort of tackle we don't really want to see. But uh, someone else will come in and take the free kick for Holly Denham, who played a very good first half. So let's hope there's no damage done there and she can get back into the game. Brooker takes the free kick instead. Her kick goes very wide. He's strong. Good hand pass off to Clarkson, who's got busy in this third quarter. Kicks to a two-on-one. The ball didn't favour Pickett, but she goes back and makes it her own anyway. Doesn't need a lucky bounce. Makes her own luck, although this kick hangs in the air. And nice attack on the flight of the footy again from Beth Schilling. Three or four very good intercept marks from her across half-back in this game. And her kick was good on this occasion as well. Bella Mann. Dangerous player, played a bit of league footy for Peel this year, gets it to half forward. Hayes can't take the chest mark, and South rebound nicely again, and it's Pickett with the ball in hands, which is a good place for South Mandela to have it. Pickett just <laughs> drew her opponent to the other side, then stepped inside, kicked down the lines. Okay, marked again defensively uh, by Peel. I've been really impressed. This is Callie. I've caught her Hanson a few times, a very handsome like player, attacks the footy, but she's had a couple of safety catches behind the ball for Peel today. Trying to find the handle on the far side. Strom. Thank you very much. Might not get much commentary out of Degs now. He's got the chips. Hot chip delivery. He's <laughs> just been placed in the middle of the commentary box. Kick down the line. is just travelled over the line. That's out of bounds in the full. So just a little holding pattern at the moment. Joe, players tiring perhaps? Yeah, and I think it's just been some really good defensive positioning. Uh, particularly by Peel's halfbacks behind the ball, and and then they're taking their marks, which we don't always see at this level. But the the marking and the intercept marking has been outstanding today. Joe, I think uh, our co-commentator got a message earlier in the day and uh, questioning whether maybe you had a drink or two last night. We'll find out now, because with the <laughs> chips placed in front of him, I reckon we'll see whether it was a large night or just a, a casual couple. Ball yeah. goes towards the boundary. It'll stay in. It's Pickett working hard out there again, kicking with the outside of the boot. Gains a bit of ground. Innes for Peel to repel once more. For that ball, Kanakosa had her name written all over it. Slanderous. <laughs> Four minutes to go in this third quarter. It's belonged entirely to South Fremantle. If they could get one more before three-quarter time, it'll make things very difficult for Peel in the last quarter, even though they will finish with the advantage of the breeze. Eugle for South Fremantle. The kick gains good distance, but unfortunately it favours her opponent. And Jordan Thompson, who was injured in that second quarter, looked as though she'd done some real damage to her calf or her ankle, but she's recovered. She's got some strapping on her lower right leg, and she's still hobbling a bit, but she is back out there, which is good to see. There's Maybe another few men here just lurking behind say. it. They've <laughs> smelt the chips. They've the chips. <laughs> in they come. No, a just a, of seagulls. a casual dinner with my wife and son and a couple of mates last night. Two sons at work, ball in the centre of the ground. Nell Baxter again, asserting herself back on this game. Looks like she's actually got a run with play with her at the moment. Overhead nearly from Rimmer. Rimmer's tackling pressure is good. Unfortunately, Bilson overruns it. Tackled. Everybody tackles everybody just for a moment. Ball's inside 50 again. Just below the knees. Caitlin Hayes can't quite get it. Gives it to Bicker. Shauna gets across to Bilson. Bilson has to be quick. It's all South Manly in front of the ball. That's no mark, but Yugo, wonderful hands. She steps inside, releases a high handball, really makes it hard for Kanakosa. But she goes in there and gets it again. She's upset upon by several Peel players. The umpire lets it go. It's back in the hands of Bilson outside. Tipping out Baxter. Still no one ahead of the ball for Peel. The Bickers are arriving now, and it's Tara Garlett, and she's got time and space. That's one bounce. She's got a chance at three or four of these. That's two. Really, really flying Tara Garlett. Gets the ball to half back, and again, intercepted defensively. Lovely work from Peel. Can't quite collect the catch. But just wonderful reading of the play by these backs. Ball spilling forward from South. Emma Innes arriving like the cavalry to help out. Trying to get the ball forward, South. Peel jump on this footy. I think the players have been consistently expecting the umpires to give them a ball up, and the umpires have let the play go. So some of the smarter players are starting to really Ooh. enact. She gets a little clip on the head, Del Borello. 
Accidental. Pick up the ball for her, help her up and give her the football. The far side of the ground, Del Brello. So Del Borello, who started the game so well, comes inside. It's a dangerous kick and Thompson's pinched the mark. Opportunity late here for Peel. They've got about a minute and a half to try to engineer a score. But South Fremantle again have the answers in defence and that's a long clearing kick. Gaining good distance. Stockwell here again. Had a big third quarter. Just shoves her opponent out the way. Umpire says play on. Then they pile in on top. And the umpire spares them in the end and will call a ball up. So 17 points is the lead to the Bulldogs. Peel looking to defend their Rogers Cup Premiership. They're going to have to come up with the goods in the last quarter. They will have the advantage of a slight breeze. They're going to have to turn the way they've been playing in this third quarter. Stockwell's given away a free kick there. The tackle just lingering on Hambrick, and she will take the free kick. So the Thunder need to go direct from this position, see if they can score. They haven't scored to the right of screen. Not a goal at least throughout the afternoon on the morning. They get it out the back on this occasion. Players free of the football as well. Pickcock might run onto this one. It's two on one. Pressure is really on the defender there for South in Brooker. She want a boundary throwing because there's Thunder players all up and down the corridor. Kick comes inside. There is a goalkeeper back and it's Garland. Three Peel Thunder players bearing down on her. But she held her composure, judged the footy nicely, takes a good mark and then clears long in the direction of Del Barella. The bounce was horrible for her. She's got a real problem now. Garlic comes across again to support. Saves the day. Doesn't get the kick away. Was she tackled? No play on's the call. Could have been a free kick right on the three-quarter time siren. The umpire said it was a bump rather than a tackle. And the Peel players... They don't argue, but I reckon part of them would have been thinking, well, we could have had a shot there right on the siren, which would have really made things interesting. What was your thoughts, Joe? Yeah, look, I, I think it was a bump. Right. But um, just really important play by Brooker out there in the forward forward pocket for Peel. That could have quite easily been a goal there for Peel to finish off the quarter. And, you know, that would have given them momentum coming into the last quarter. And Peel are a team that can get a run on and use some really good uh, foot skills. So I think that was a great defensive eff effort by Brooker and then Garlet to help her out. So goals to Ward and Stockwell in the third quarter for South, adding to the goals that Reedy and Boothman kicked in the first term. Jordan Thompson remains the only goal kicker for Peel Thunder. They're going to need to kick at least three, possibly four with the breeze in the last quarter peel all the work is right ahead of them at South Fremantle by 17 points at three quarter time in the Rogers Cup grand final sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know so here's what you need to know about Simply Energy we're proud supporters of WA footy you can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time and with service that's hard to beat we make switching simple The V6 Twin Turbo Rear Wheel Drive Kia Stinger. It took seven years to create and 4.9 seconds to understand why. Hey darling, uh, so I was thinking maybe we could all go out for dinner. Oh, I wish, but I need to finish this prezzo. Oh, that's cool, I'll just take the kids. Okay, all right, bye. together. What? Oh. New Optus Family Plan includes four sims and the McAfee Safe family app. If you need it live streamed, you need front row screens. Visit frontrowscreens.com.au. Sometimes it's easy to just go with who you know. So here's what you need to know about Simply Energy. We're proud supporters of WA Footy. You can get 50% off our gas usage charges when you pay on time, and with service that's hard to beat, we make switching simple. 
One quarter to go in the Rogers Cup Grand Final. And all the work is ahead of this group of ladies. Peel Thunder trailing by 17 points at three-quarter time. They are the reigning premiers in the Rogers Cup. But South Fremantle at the moment hold all the aces. They will kick into the breeze in the last quarter, though, South. So it does give Peel a chance to get their game up and running and see whether they might be able to engineer a big fight back in the last quarter. Dave Lindsay, Clint Degabrot and Joe Taylor, your commentary team for the grand final. Joe, South Fremantle had the breeze in the, sec in the third quarter. Needed to put a lot of uh, space between themselves and Peel, and they've done exactly that. Yeah, absolutely. Their coaching staff would be wrapped with that effort. Um, I thought Anderson was really important across the middle of the ground. She has been all game, but particularly in that one, just her, her evasiveness and her speed was able to break the line. Uh, Cronin had a good quarter, and Ward, obviously, in the ruck, and then she sort of got up and about. And then also Garlett, I think, has been pretty important for them as a deep back. She, she ran the ball out, but she's also held that goalkeeper position. And for Peel, I think, um, in this quarter... We need to see a little bit more from Hayes. Um, Innes and Baxter have both had really, really good games. And if they can run the ball with the wind and, and get some long penetrating kicks in, I think, and Rimmer down forward, I think she's been fairly dangerous. So Peel certainly aren't out of it, um, but they'll want to get a fast start. Would that be your message if you're in the Peel coach's box? Run the run the, run the the game, even though you've got the breeze, run it at South Mantle's defence? Yeah, you can't let the breeze do it for you. You've got to play your normal game style and, um, and hope that South maybe go into their shell a little bit. But I think Peel are best when they're running the footy and using their skills. So obviously your kicks are going to go a little bit further, but but you don't want to change your game style and, and kick on the breeze and hope for hope for the best. So as you mentioned during the third quarter, the 18s and the All-Stars game that's coming up yeah. next week. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's on Saturday. So obviously it's been a, a, a tough year in terms of trying to get everyone everything they want and need this season. And there's been a lot of footy played in a very short amount of time. But we round out our talent program on, for the in the female side next week. Peel, as we just watched Peel Thunder, got too many on the ground, which wouldn't be a great start. <laughs> well, it's an easy start. Yeah, play seven forwards. We were talking about it before. Um, yeah, so it's, it, it's going to end the talent program for the fe in the female space uh, next week. Waffle All Stars. There's some terrific players in that side, and of course the State 18s. And many of those State 18s are out there on the deck today. And we'll see that live streamed, I think, as well next week. Is that right? And not commentated, unfortunately, by uh, Dave Lindsay. But uh, we've, we've sort of got. Um, Joe Taylor in the, the special comments cupboard at the moment, so we'll we'll make sure we bring her her little container and unlock that <laughs> next next Saturday. This is the first she's heard of it, but uh, <laughs> oh, she can't stay away. Loves her footy, and she's enjoyed the grand final here today. Crutton and out of the middle she goes. Didn't see a lot of her in the third quarter. Her first half was excellent. This girl really got involved though in that third quarter. That was Clarkson. That kick takes a sharp left-hand turn and it didn't get inside the 50-metre arc. So as a result, we see the lasso there from the field umpire who got the message from the boundary. We do like that lasso. It'll be a free kick away of Peel. No one having touched the football. Corley with the kick. Gets it down the ground. It's a nice bit of work out the back from Jetton. Peel are running the footy to start, but that kick goes straight to the advantage of Eugle. She couldn't take the mark. Tries to sidestep her opponent. She's caught. Umpire calls play on. Eagle goes for a second and a third attempt as well. Good pressure from Curry, not allowing this ball to come out. Again, the umpires are happy to let the girls sort it out for themselves. Eagle wants to try to keep that one in. We do hear the boundary umpires whistle this time. And a boundary throw in just beneath Lance Catchpole, who's peering out of that uh, little window on the scoreboard, <laughs> keeping a close eye on the action. Of course, not only scores here, it scores for the Wacker, the state and international matches. So that scoreboard would never need to be checked by any goal umpire or any official today. It'll be accurate. It's flashing through. It's that Clarkson again. She did get going in that third quarter. So the last thing Peel need is another dash out from the South getting involved. Peel just trying to slow the play up a little bit at the moment as South push forward. They'd feel that they could end the game or end at least Peel's spirit early with a couple of goals. Desperate to get this ball into the corridor you'd, you'd think. So boundary umpires will bring that 10 in and throw it in. Some delay in getting this ball in at the moment. Gee, the umpires have been good today. Decided to let them play, protect their head. It's been excellent display from them. Again, little tug on the jumper. It's going south from Amel's way. The peel set up pretty well in front of the ball. Behind the ball in this case, my apologies. And now Baxter gets a run at this. You can't quite get the catch. Kruttman's chasing her, so watch out. She does get her. A little high one. Pratt's just reached at the last moment to grab the high. Love to see that from Nell Baxter. Girls don't always look to play on and take advantage, but 
Cruttenden and Baxter have done it today. Coming into Shepard to Mark Hayes. Cheeky little AFL move. Ball drops in some space. It's Curry. Curry just puts the ball in a space. This is a good ball in. What can happen here? Cavalry needs to arrive, but unfortunately the Cavalry in this case is in the form of Eugle, and it's a defender. She bounces the ball out towards 50 and finds some grass beyond the pack. Emerinus and Clarkson. The battle for this. Neither go the ball initially. Go for the body contract. Contact, I should say. Innes tries to emerge with the footy. She's stripped of it. And it's been caught for holding the ball. And Clarkson is up and about. She gets the ball into the corridor. Over the back, Tara Garlett's come up from the defence. Hayes has a swipe and misses. Nell narrowly misses getting run over by an oncoming Tara Garlett. She gets a long ball out. Unfortunately dealt with after she kicked it. And it will be really a disadvantageous <laughs> advantage. <laughs> Joe, how would you be happy with that? You, don't, 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 you get an advantage by having the ball outside the corridor on the far wing. She was nearly the closest player to that ball. She nearly got her own relayed free kick. Yes. I'm that, not sure that, I've seen that before. Maybe that's the only reason she didn't, isn't allowed to. <laughs> is that Jetton getting the ball towards half forward? Man has a fair crack at that. Missing the footy going forward is Peel. And South are able to repel once more. Doing enough at the moment. And this is going to hit Boothman in the corridor. She plays on quickly. Looking for a shepherd from Stockwell. Stockwell actually takes her player to Boothman in this occasion. Crutland gets a run on. Gunton doing some good work three on one. Handball to self, Poppy Stockwell. Looking around, goes over the shoulder just before the tackle, and the tackle then was engaged. And Sabrina McKay Tuckerman took the opportunity to make sure Poppy Stockwell knew that there was a defender around. I think Boothman and Stockwell weren't quite on the same page there. You had Stockwell looking for the outside handball and Boothman looking for the shepherd, and, and they both sort of got in each other's way. It's a little fortunate in the end, South Fremantle. Stockwell, she's a good kick of the football and gains good distance here. Pickett's read this well. You can see her attacking the contest from about three or four back. South have got a three on two, four to the play. The kick out in front of the leading forward, and that's good use of the footy. And Lansky has taken the mark. So Tate Lansky to have a shot for goal. And the breeze will push this hard from right to left. So she really need to set it out wide of the right-hand goalpost. So challenging kick, and you've got to hold your nerve here because you've basically got to give yourself little chance of kicking it if you know what I mean you've got to line it up for the behinds and let the breeze do the rest she doesn't do that comes right off the inside of the boot it's going to work out better it's going to be a mark in the corridor for South Fremantle she'll claim it as a pass and it's Caitlin Arnoldi who will have a shot now from directly in front and this will really hurt Peel if it goes through just some loose checking there by Peel expecting the ball to go a little bit closer to goal I think and um and fortuitously landed in the lap of the South Fremantle player. Haven't seen a goal at this end of the ground all morning. We have now. And South Fremantle have one hand on the cup. The first goal into the breeze for the entire match. And their lead is out to 23 points in the early stages of the last quarter. And it's very tough now for Peel Thunder, Joe Taylor. They've got to get themselves going and going very fast. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Peel has started well, particularly Nell Baxter, sort of taken it upon herself to, to drive that ball forward, but they just weren't able to get the connection forward. And, and like we said, South, with some, they've played really in forward and strong all day in their forward line, so um, just a bit of a fortuitous lap, lap of the gods uh, drop in your lap there, but, but you've got to take those opportunities and then finish with, into the win, so that was a great finish. Skip the skipper from South Fremantle didn't just turn her wrist and just aim her foot that way just to open up the space. Let's give it to her, Tate Lansky. Great pass. Hits an oldie. Gets a goal in a grand final, which might have been her first significant pick. The Peel now have just fallen down in their setups and receive a warning as we see Chloe Bilson running 180 metres to correct this instead of one of her teammates just knocking on in the reset. So The worst thing here, Diggs, is the clock keeps running, so you've penalised yourself about 40 seconds of gun time. Up goes Hayes. In the hands of Garlett looks to be moved onto the ball. Killing move from South Fremantle, perhaps. Shakira Pickett worried off it. Hayes engages again. Calling for the ball at the back is Gunton. She's been pretty solid as a defender today. Well, any player that's been on her has had to really work for their really work for their possessions. Marty Atkins down there marshalling the South Fremantle boundary line. He's no he's no stranger to South Fremantle premierships. And the premiership player himself. The ball's intercepted once again by the Peel backs. Just having a little look around. There's a lot of players that have stopped their 
they're moving, so consequently, there's not a lot of space ahead. Steps left, steps right, some good pressure from South from now, but unfortunately just drops this onto the chest. Boothman plays on straight away. She was always going to. She's running straight at the goals. She's just pulled the ball drop just at the last moment, and unfortunately, got a little bit of left to right. But again, pressure from the South from Mantle forwards. I think you said it in the first quarter, Joe. You were impressed with how hard they were working without the ball. They've locked this one deep in the forward line against the breeze. Yeah, there's certainly a, a forward line that doesn't like the ball to come out. So the, the coaches would be pretty impressed with that. And they've done it all day. They haven't had a lapse. So, um, you know, it's, it's really set them up well to score well in this game. Anderson with going to the inside out. Sorry, it's Hugel going inside out. And she's carried a goal. That's remarkable from Pickett and Anderson. That is unbelievable against the breeze. Just thought it was going to be some defensive play and get the ball over. It's not Anderson. It's Reedy. It's Reedy. Ash Reedy. Remarkable kick from the pocket. Just inside, outside, right ankle. Got enough spin on it. She rode that home. Wonderful work by Pickett too. Pickett actually had the ball balanced on her finger as she ran 30 or 40 <laughs> metres. No possessions, but got the ball in a dangerous spot. And that is a remarkable goal from Ash Reedy. She was the most dangerous forward in the first half and got a fortuitous bounce. And then that one's a bit of a miracle goal. It's come off injured in the middle. So she's had a pretty eventful day, Ash Reedy, and she'd certainly be happy with her work um, as, the, as the game winds down. She first to help herself to the complimentary ice vovos after the game. It's hard, always hard for the young players to know how to celebrate. Get into some sweet foods, I'd imagine, after denying yourself the last couple of weeks. Peel trying to work back in this game. It's in the hands of Anderson now. She goes long and deep. Trouble. Stockwell lurking at the back. She gets the ball off the pack, pulls it around the corner. It's over. South from Antle have turned the tables at this time last year when they had a devastating loss to Peel in the grand final. They spent all year working towards this. And Poppy Stockwell, who was just absolutely beautifully positioned at this stoppage to read this off hands and just drops in what would have to be the sealer, Joe. Oh, most definitely. She's had a great game, actually, particularly second half Stockwell. She was in that third quarter when South needed to put the foot down. She was the one that stood up. And so it's good to see her to get some more good reward. And I think the move of Garland into the middle has really made, made the difference. And, um, and South has certainly broken, broken the back of Peel now, I think. I like, I like the idea of rather than defending the breeze, going and getting into the centre mm. and stopping the breeze being a factor at all from Garlett and wonderful coaching too. It's like they're looking to make the intercepts in the middle of the ground rather than deep in defence and she's not only making intercepts, she's setting up play now as well. There's a peel player coming off from their defensive end as well, which means South have a free, free player in their forward line, which again is the best position on the ground. If you can convince your coach that's where you should play. Spare man in the forward line. Quick kick from Mann, goes wide. Del Barello, who really started things off nicely for South. Garlett, just about best on ground now, gives it away to Cronin. High kick gets inside 50, and again, Pickett's judgment in the air is outstanding. She spins quickly on the right, and again, Stockwell. Well, whatever she had at half time, she needs to have that every single time at half time because she has really lit the game up in the second half. And she can finish with three goals here if she kicks this one. Got herself really involved in the early stages of the third quarter. And that has provided her with all the energy she needs to keep going throughout the second half. 25 out directly in front, Poppy Stockwell. She won't miss this. She nails it. Stockwell's got three after half time. And South have kicked the last six goals of the game. And this is a match winning 41 point lead. And they've been outstanding in this last quarter, Joe. Oh, most definitely. And look, Peel rolled the dice. They had, they had to win the game. So they probably fell a little bit away from the defensive play they've had through through the rest of the game to try and try and win it. And it's backfired a little bit on them. And Souths have just, you know, cruttened and went into the middle for the first bounce, as we've touched on Garlet. So they really just went, we're going to put our best in the middle and, and just drive that ball forward. And it's worked for them. All the talented players involved in that last goal coaching staff have come down to the bench already there's still six and a half minutes to play but the celebrations have started nice low bows are open adrian helping himself to one right now just off camera ball up beth pasco is that nice beth Schilling in the ruck stepping trying to step through there was anderson in this case now baxter continues to have a massive influence for her team peel looking to get connection with bilson carries her bicker reads this really nicely turns around the corner Right foot deep, as deep as she might have liked. The ball's then defended really nicely on the far side by the South players. They just seem to know, Joe, 
that if they just hold things up, their mates will come and help. Yeah, they've played a long time together, this Souths unit. So, you know, they, they do have that um, reliability amongst the group, I guess, where they know that who's, who's going to come and help them and, and they just need to stick to what they do and, and the cavalry will always arrive. Schilling's long ball in goes out of bounds. So we haven't seen the ball at this end of the ground at all in this last quarter, which is exactly what Peel did not need when they were trailing by 17 points at three-quarter time. South into the wind, kicking four goals in this last quarter. Once they kick that first one, unfortunately for Peel, the back was broken. Mann's made good use of the footy oh. here. That's a fantastic mark deep in defence. Pinching that one, Eugle. She's been very impressive today. Gets good distance on her kick. Man will keep it in for Peel. Swings around quickly. The kick a little untidy, though. It's gone out of bounds on the full. The, the Indigenous players today for South Fremantle, Joe, they've just been brilliant to watch. Oh, absolutely. Some famous names there. But the marking across the board today has been great. And I think that might have been one of the one of the pick of the bunch. But, um, you know, they certainly hold her head up high down there for that one. Stephen Michael Foundation, of course, coming through Paul McGumbers. Leadership there, they're bringing these players from Narragin and Katanning, um, well, and, and Collie eventually, but these players are, are, are Narragin players, my understanding. Exciting bunch, a couple have even played in the league side this year. It's another ball up between the square and the 50, advantaging Peel side. See how seem content now just to really slow this game up. It's all for Peel, trying to get some more score. They're driving through, tackled without the ball. In fact, tackled strongly without the ball there. Peel player in Thompson. He's got the only goal for Peel today. She pops this up towards, well, looking for Bilson in the end, but having to do the work in the front looks like um, Bilson now and Pascoe all bouncing around. Cronin feeds the ball out, long ball towards Reedy. Hands full now, Johansson, although falls to Johansson, she spills it too. Slippery footy on the far side. Beautiful conditions, despite my weather app telling me that it was going to rain this whole game. Bursting on the pack's back star. She hasn't given up today. Looking for Bicker. Can't quite find her. Souths again have the answers as a defensive unit. Running away again. Kicking the ball towards the wing. Reedy up. Yeah, Hanson two. Ball on the deck again. Garlett. See her in league football next year, no doubt. 18 years of age. Should have a wonderful Waffle W career. Trying to find some space. Is Gunton behind the ball. He's also due for league representation. Speaking of league representation, the speedster in Crutton gets this ball inside 50. Just got a little calf cramp again. She struggled with cramp this year. Ball is held up inside 50. So being a sprinter, has to eat a lot of bananas pre-game to Harley Crutton. <laughs> She's uh, shown that she does have a tank and an ability to really, really run. Souths go ahead one more time. This time trying to break through. Tackle can't do so. Holding the ball. Free kick to Peel. Got a, a player uh, just, in a, just ahead of the footy. Player just in a bit of concern. The umpire appropriately noted that this play was going to go straight over the injured player. It's Boothman. Just coming through the screen now. Hand out. Hand out. <laughs> like uh, our executive manager trying to catch me eating chips on camera. Thank <laughs> you, Scott Baker. Garlet. Knocked free from her. One player in the crowd thought that was one spectator <laughs> in the crowd thought that was holding the ball. He's alone in his. He's raw. Games certainly stings going out of the game at the moment. Both teams realise what is the, the result. Won't expect Peel to step down at any stage. Joe, you've been coaching against these guys and working against these guys for a long time. One thing they don't do is give up. Oh no, absolutely. Peel have um, for many years now they've been top of the tree in this youth girls competition. So um, you know they won't give up. And these girls will step up to league footy next year and, and the future's bright for both of these clubs. Bit of cramp there for Pasco as well. So players have put a lot of effort and energy in as uh, the Thunder do go forward. Hopefully can sneak one more goal. They've uh, tried very hard today. Had some opportunities in the first half. It's been all south after half time. And Bulldogs holding things up across half back again. Ebony Clarkson, she's had a very good second half. Peel piling in on top here. They might get a free kick. Umpire's set himself up to blow, hold, holding the ball. And a free kick to the, the Thunder. Sorot with the kick towards full forward. 2-1-2 two -two contest. 
Out the back is Jess Edwards, but she's beaten to the footy and taken away from her by Darcy Clements, who kicks for space. Del Borello, shocking bounce for her, allows Mann in. She sidesteps her, hand passes away. Anderson, always keen to bust that tackle when, when it initially comes. Garlett gets it towards full forward. Can we have one more bit of magic from Reedy? It's an open goal square. She's hooked it a little bit too much. And behind only. She so was most, brilliant at different times today, Diggs. At least, at least in WA, South Brown will produce the most AFL talent, uh, most Aboriginal uh, talent, uh, including uh, some Torres Strait Islanders as well, of course, our Indigenous, or well, our first Australians, which I think I like the term better. Um, and this is the case there. That, that passage you're playing involved three very highly talented Aboriginal players that have got the ability to play AFLW. Certainly have. And they're about 10 seconds away from celebrating here. They'll get a free kick, but I reckon... It's going to be too far away. There's a countdown clock being counted down by someone in the crowd. And there is the siren. South Fremantle are the premiers in the Rogers Cup for 2020. They've defeated Peel Thunder by 42 points. And it was total dominance after half time from the Bulldogs. They've backed up their win in the second semi final. And Joe Taylor, they were thoroughly impressive today, the first quarter, and in particular the third and fourth terms as well. Oh, definitely. Look, early on in the game, you had Sinead Del, Bar Del Barello, who really, across half-back, kept them in the game because Peel were, were working hard forward and Ash Reedy was pretty magical up forward. And then I think in that second half, Poppy Stock well stepped up and Tara Garlett just provided that little bit of class and great coaching move to get her into the middle. And I think that she probably had as much effect on the game as anybody else today. Brilliant performance from South Fremantle. Three goals to Poppy Stockwell all after half-time. Reedy kicked two. One to Arnoldi and to Ward and also Boothman who came off injured just towards the end of the game. But uh, the Bulldogs are the premiers in Rogers Cup. And Degs, you spoke about it throughout the game. They blooded a number of these players in their league team. It was the first, first year that they had an opportunity to play in league footy. We saw their first game and they, on that first day, decided not to give any of the youngsters a go. They learnt pretty quickly from that because they copped a bit of a hiding from Eastman on that day, and then from then on, they just injected a couple each week, and uh, obviously that sort of experience that they had has only benefited them. Well, Lady sitting to our right has been the master of that over the last ten years. It's just getting those getting those players those initial tastes at sort of 15 and 16, embedding them in the in the league program if they're good enough to carry well their weight, emotional maturity, uh, physical maturity. Um, done it pretty well, the Swans. And I think um, Souths have taken a little lesson from from uh, those other clubs that have done so. So Subiaco doing a little bit more this year. Swans have always done it. Peel are very good at it. And this year, Souths, as you said, have been able to play eight to nine of these girls through the league program this year. Five and six games of league football under the belts of, of Cruttenden and Cronin. And that really sets them up well to play well, obviously, today. But next season looks pretty bright for South Fremantle in terms of what we saw today with those eight players. So... Anderson, Boothman, Clarkson, Clements, Cronin, Cruttenen, Delbrello, Reedy, Stockwell and Strom. It'll all be terrific ins for the ones for South next year. Oh, most definitely. Look, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to do to blood some of those young girls, particularly for South youth this year. They had a tough, tough um, introduction, I guess, into league football. But for them, those girls now going forward, they know the intensity of league football. And you could see that today. When the, when the heat was on, it was those players. It was your Ash Reedy, your Poppy Stockwell, um, these girls that just really stood up when, when the heat was on. And, and they've experienced that at a higher level and they were able to now build on it here. And, and for South Frio, they'd have to be pretty happy about how they're looking coming into the, the season next year. Always great to see this huddle between the two teams after the game as well. This one's a bit longer than normal, being a grand final as well. Both teams paying tribute to each other. As, uh, they've had some good contests between the two teams throughout the year and uh, it is something we like to see, Joe. I know your team's been involved in it uh, for many years now, the, uh, the little huddle, and now they'll get their chance to break away into their teams and celebrate accordingly. Oh, most definitely. Look, it's a nice touch. Um, sometimes when you're on the losing end of a grand final, <laughs> that's the last thing you want yeah. to do. So good on Peel for getting in there. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's, everyone gets to appreciate. And, and everyone, I think it's important, it's, it's friends off the field. You yeah. know, we all get our white line fever. But once we get off the field, um, you know, it's, it's important for us to, to respect each other. And just looking at Degger's list here, uh, 
Peel also have a significant amount of girls that played some league football this year, and I think Nell Baxter probably leads that up. In, in I thought she was probably their best player for the whole game today. Um, Bella Mann was pretty good today, and, and Madison Rimmer, I think she caused some real havoc down forward. They weren't able to get score, but she, she was one that they needed to keep a close eye on. Some Beth. great close-up shots here of the South Mental celebrations as well, Dick. Saying Beth Schilling, uh, I haven't seen as, as much of her in the Peel jumper as we, we'd want to, and they did attempt to they did pick her in the league side, she hurt her ankle on the way on the way in. She's an exciting prospect for the Thunder too in the future. Just as we're looking across, talking about prospects, that's Indy Strom. She's got some decent bloodlines with <laughs> Noah playing tomorrow. Uh, Mim will be playing or carrying the ruck again in the AFLW season for Fremantle. And Stephen, of course, over there too. There's another one to come. So the Strom factory continues to produce. Yeah, up there in Exmouth and um. There are obviously something going on up there because they're a fairly tall family and Indy, <laughs> Indy hasn't missed out. But, yeah, some pretty good pre pedigree there and Noah will be happy with that result and hope that um, South Frio can get the Chockeys tomorrow as well. Now, Joe, if you were... Uh, I don't think you were casting votes, were you, in Best on Ground? Uh, I didn't see any voting slip next to you. Not sure who the, uh, the people trusted with that job would be here this morning, but uh, if you had to pick one name out there as the standout player this morning, which way would you go? Uh, look, I'd go Tara Garlett, purely for... She was down back early. She was probably the one that held up the, the deep defence, and then when they needed an injection of some class and speed in the middle... Uh, she was the one that really turned the game where where P uh, Souths were able to kick away in that last quarter. I think that her score involvements would have been pretty high. Got to go against tradition. I think Mel Baxter was the best on the ground today. Uh, I, traditionally, if you, if you lose the game, you don't get the the award. But I, don't, I, don't, I really can't fault her game today. Cruttenham was also super. But yeah, Garlett certainly, in, in if you've measured impact on the game, Garlett stopped the opposition scoring and then she created numerous scoring opportunities for her team. So Peel Thunder just having a few words at the moment as we're watching the highlights. Their coach, Jeff Hayes, is just uh, giving them some consoling words as our presenter down at ground level has just uh, acknowledged the umpires. They're going to come across and get a, a medal from Scott Baker I think, um, from the WA Footy Commission. I'm happy to say it again. That was a very well-controlled game, very well officiated. Um, oh, it was fast, fair and safe. I don't think you can ask for any more than that. And We've seen this, this umpire pairing a couple of times this season and I'm impressed. Yeah, they let the game go, which is particularly in a grand final when things are uh, players are nervous and you just want to be able to have that opportunity to play and sometimes let the ball go a little bit longer so it can spill out and we can see that flow on play. So the uh, Peel Thunder team just being congratulated on their season and their effort today. You're right, the, the standard of umpiring has improved over the last couple of years with the Waffle W. We're about to get the winner of the MVP award for today's grand final. You're a good judge, Joe. She's excited. She's, I've never seen someone sprint across to collect their medal. Bit of a dance as she went across as well. She uh, obviously left something in the tank, <laughs> TG. <laughs> Tell us a bit, bit about her game, Joe, because we saw her deep in defence. We saw her in the midfield, laying tackles, a bit of everything today. She was just really solid in defence early when the heat was on. Um, took some crucial marks and, and was able to run the ball out and, and really get that run on. And then, as I said, late, when, when the game was up for grabs, she moved into the, into the midfield and um, created, I think she probably, of the what, four or five goals in the last quarter, she would have had a hand in, in all of them, I think. So... And it's great to see her back at South Fremantle. She, she's left to go for opportunities, which we want to see our, our top-end players do. And um, this year, once South's got their, their licence for uh, senior football, she was one of the first to go back. So it's great to see some reward for Tara there because she's been loyal to, to South Fremantle Football Club. Shakira Pickett in the same boat too. Did a bit of work in the pre-season with East Fremantle and came back once the licence got, got acknowledged. There's um, not many of these players today... Um, didn't have a big influence on the game. That was a very good team effort. I'm just, as they're calling all these names out, they all got the footy today. They all got it to the right spot. They all defended very, very one-on-one -on -one across the ground. Yeah, I thought Cronin was very good today. She just yep. understated, but she, she drove the ball forward and she was really tough with her tackling around the ball as well. The State Academy member Hunter hasn't really shown uh, the talent that we think she's got. But today, I think she took a big step towards, um, and with her league football too, She's really strong in the brain. She's, she's really hard to fatigue. And she just takes everything in her stride. Very easy to coach. So an understated player who's got a big future. And these uh, these Narragin girls, I think um, South Mel 
Women's Footy Club. Marty Atkins will be renting a house very close to the ground for them. <laughs> Well, it's nice for them to have a premiership already to celebrate for their 120th year. South Mental Football Club, there might be one coming in the men's comp as well, having finished as minor premiers. They've got a bit of work to do, obviously. They take on Claremont tomorrow in a second semi-final. And then uh, they do have the grand final at Fremantle Oval, Joe, which would be nice for them if the red and white are out there on the big day. Oh, it'll be a great day in Fremantle as well. I think there's going to be a fair bit going around the city of Fremantle, so I'm excited to be there. We'll hear a bit from the captain here, Tate Lansky. That's an interesting thing she said in the first cup as the club as mm. a whole because they've merged this year. Marty Atkins running both the male and the female program. That's terrific. So Tate gets to make the speech and co-captain Darcy Clements will be presented the cup with the coach as well. I thought Darcy's second half was excellent as well. Yep. They had a number of players who at halftime you would have said they were a bit quiet. Poppy Stockwell's one. But a couple of players who they would have liked to lift at halftime did exactly what they needed. Yeah, whatever the coaches said to them at half-time, they certainly took it on board and, and changed the way they were playing. Sneaking, sneaking suspicion. The three-quarter time speech would be forget the breeze. South would have said forget the breeze, work into it. And I reckon Peel might have just a little flutter through the crowd saying that the breeze was going to help here. And of course, when you called it at three-quarter time. It's not a magic thing. Sorry, Adrian. There you go. Pizza's not Ice Vovos tonight, Dex. He's already eaten the Ice Vovos, <laughs> Adrian. The coaching staff scooped them up at three-quarter time, I think. <laughs> Joe, when you win the flag, you can talk for as long as you like, I reckon. That's one of the longest premiership speeches I've, I've heard, but he spoke very well. He did speak very well, and, it's, and he didn't let anything slip that he shouldn't have. <laughs> so South Fremantle are the premiers. The cup is coming across to the dogs, and the two captains are going to hold it all off right now. And they'll pose for some photos as well. Congratulations to South Fremantle. Fantastic grand final performance. They kicked the last six goals of the game. And they've won the match by 42 points. And the MVP medal for best on ground going to Tara Garlett, who played a wonderful game, full four-quarter effort from her. And congratulations to her and to the Bulldogs. They're a very happy bunch there in the red and white. And why shouldn't they be? A dominant performance on grand final day and a Rogers Cup premiership in South Fremantle's 120th year. Time for us to wrap things up here. Thanks to Front Row Screens for all their work with the Rogers Cup and the Waffle W throughout the year as well. And we're looking forward to a big... 
grand final in Waffle W later this afternoon between Subiaco and Peel. Joe Taylor, thanks for all your work over the last few weeks in particular. And uh, Deg has already talked you into doing something next week as well, by the sounds of things. She hasn't answered. <laughs> 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 no, it's been a pleasure. Um, it's a good spot to watch the footy from, so thanks for having me. And Deg, well done as well. You've uh, managed to get through the big grand final. The boys held up as well. Half a bucket of chips demolished. Still a few more to go. Slander. <laughs> Slanderous. Enjoy the rest of your day, mate. I'm sure uh, all the hard work you put in over a number of years, you'll enjoy grand final day. Absolutely, and it's going to be terrific. The grand final function today, and then what should be uh, what should be a terrific grand final? With team song, South gonna, Metal. Yeah, we're going to get the song in here. They're getting ready to go. Here they go. We are in the huddle too. Bit of both there over the, the PA system and from the girls as well. Great way for us to finish here and great win today for South Fremantle Premiers. Defeating Peel by 42 points. Congratulations to the Bulldogs. We're going to wrap things up here with uh, pictures here of the Bulldogs, the Premiers in the Rogers Cup for 2020. This Waffle W live stream is brought to you by Optus, proud naming rights partner of the Waffle and the Waffle W. The rear wheel drive V6 twin turbo Kia Stinger. Simply Energy, proudly supporting WA footy. And the West Coast Eagles, supporting WA female footballers to follow their dreams.